Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a blue-collar worker named Wade Porter. He was just a regular guy with a job, living with his girlfriend Laura, and their son Michael. They wanted to borrow money for their wedding, and start a new business. When Porter got a loan from the bank, Laura was thrilled. One night, a noise woke him up. He checked on Michael and found him safe. But then an intruder attacked him in the kitchen, and ran off. He chased and accidentally killed the intruder. He felt guilty, and when the police came, they thought he made a mistake by confronting the intruder outside. To make things worse, the intruder hadn't stolen anything, and Porter is arrested for murder. In prison, he accidentally upset a fellow inmate named Tinto. Even though Porter didn't mean any harm, he got into trouble, because he was new and felt scared and out of place. The next day, Laura visited him in prison. She told him their son was asking about him, and promised to find a good lawyer. Porter's public defender explained he might face a few years in prison, and a big fine, maybe up to $1 million. He couldn't afford it, but the defender promised to help clear his name. That night, chaos erupted in the prison. Inmates fought, and guards used tear gas to stop them. The next day, a man named Gordon visited to talk to an inmate, John Smith. Gordon said John would spend his life in prison for the riot the night before. However, John didn't seem to care about what Gordon said. He just wanted to celebrate his late son's birthday. He had lost his family in a tragic event, and no longer cared about his own life. He got revenge on the person who caused his family's deaths, leading to his imprisonment. Meanwhile, back to Porter, his public defender suggested he might get a lighter sentence and a lower fine, if he admitted guilty. Feeling like he had no choice, he agreed and pleaded no contest. He got a three-year sentence for unintentional manslaughter. On the way to prison, a man named Jake warned Porter about a dangerous prisoner, Danny Sampson. Shortly after, Sampson attacked another prisoner, and handed the bloody knife to Jake, who hid it under Porter's chair. Jake threatened Porter to keep quiet, or Sampson would hurt him. Porter ended up in solitary confinement while the stabbing was investigated. Lieutenant Jackson questioned him, but Porter didn't cooperate. Jackson decided to transfer Porter, to a special unit for high-profile criminals sentenced to death or life in prison. Inmates there were locked in their cells most of the day, and couldn't have visitors for the first three months. One day, guards escorted Porter to an area, where tough-looking prisoners had gathered. A fight broke out between two inmates, and nobody tried to stop them, it turned out they were having a gladiator-style battle. Lieutenant Jackson and the guards watched from afar, and even made bets on the outcome. After the fight, guards used rubber bullets to stop the inmates. One prisoner openly rebelled against Lieutenant Jackson's rule, and expressed his anger. Guards took him to a room where the lieutenant brutally beat him. Days later, Laura visited Porter in prison again. They missed each other a lot, since they hadn't seen each other in three months. Laura admitted she had run out of money to support herself and their son. Porter suggested selling their property to make ends meet, while he was still in prison. John, who got a life sentence for causing trouble at San Quentin State Prison, was transferred to Porter's prison, and became his cellmate in the special unit. John tried to intimidate Porter, but Porter tried to avoid conflict. The next day, they were called to the courtyard, where other inmates had gathered. Porter met Jake again, who said Samson was grateful Porter hadn't reported him. John seemed familiar with some inmates, and they greeted him with respect. He had a reputation as a troublemaker in different prisons, getting transferred multiple times. He started giving Porter advice on surviving in prison. One day, Porter got into a fight with another inmate, Turner. Initially struggling, Porter managed to win. When Officer Collins was about to shoot Porter with a rubber bullet, Lieutenant Jackson ordered him to shoot Turner instead. Collins hesitated, so the lieutenant shot Turner himself. Porter was confused by this, but John explained that guards make the rules in prison, and can do what they want. One day, an investigator named Hammond visited the prison for a routine inspection. Hammond questioned why there were still so many fights in the prison under Lieutenant Jackson's management. To avoid suspicion, he promised to work harder to reduce conflicts. During another visit from Laura and their son Michael, they again revealed they were struggling financially. Porter suggested selling their house, and reassured Laura that he would make them happy once he was out. Jake asked Porter to participate in a fight, but when Porter refused, Jake's men attacked him. The guards used tear gas to stop the fight, and John scolded Porter for not following Jake's orders. Porter was summoned to meet Samson in the yard, where Jake complained about Porter defying him. Samson ordered Jake's elimination, and offered Porter to join his group. Elsewhere, Lieutenant Jackson and Sergeant Roberts watched their children's baseball game. 
Roberts expressed concern about their mistreatment of inmates, but Jackson was determined to continue. One night, Porter asked John about his family's killers. John explained he wanted them to suffer. Laura visited Porter again, sharing her struggles, and left abruptly, leaving Porter furious. In the yard, Porter was attacked by a newcomer. When he didn't retaliate, Lt. Jackson fired a rubber bullet at him. The lieutenant questioned Porter about Samson's stabbing, but Porter remained silent. When Porter refused to identify Samson as the attacker, the lieutenant falsely testified against him, resulting in an additional three-year sentence. Laura's visits started taking a toll on her relationship with Porter, and encouraged by her mother, she ended her relationship with him through a letter. Heartbroken and enraged, Porter started fighting other prisoners, ignoring John's advice. Losing hope after Laura's decision to leave him, he was visited by Gordon, who John had asked to stop visiting, seeing it as futile. Laura packed their belongings with her mother's help, but their son Michael appeared, questioning why they were packing Porter's stuff. Laura explained they wouldn't be living with Porter anymore, devastating Michael, who loves his father dearly. Realizing Michael's love for Porter and the difficulty of the situation, Laura decided to return to the prison, and tell Porter she'd wait for him for their son's sake. Overjoyed, Porter shared the news with John, and they planned to expose the truth about the prison violence, possibly leading to his release. He asked Lt. Jackson for permission to fight Tinto, the new inmate who bullied him, claiming he sought revenge. Jackson agreed, but only if the fight is to the death. Meanwhile, Porter asked Laura to meet with Gordon, because following John's advice, Gordon could help uncover Lt. Jackson's injustices in prison. The day of the battle arrived, and Porter faced Tinto in a fierce fight, struggling to keep up. Laura and Gordon, along with investigator Hammond, headed to the prison to expose Lt. Jackson's actions. John, prepared with a homemade weapon hidden behind his glasses, watched from the sidelines. After a tough battle, Porter managed to gain the upper hand, and incapacitate Tinto. Despite Jackson's demand, Porter refused to kill Tinto after defeating him, which enraged Jackson. Just as Jackson was about to shoot Porter, John intervened to shield him, with other inmates following suit. This act of solidarity angered the lieutenant further, who contemplated shooting all the prisoners. Roberts tried to calm Jackson down, warning him of the severe consequences of his actions. Reluctantly, he ordered the prisoners to return to their cells. However, when John and Porter returned to their cell, a guard suddenly appeared, and escorted them back to the prison yard. In the yard, Jackson was ready to harm Porter, but Roberts, unwilling to witness Porter's fate, distanced himself. Meanwhile, Collins discreetly reactivated the surveillance cameras, hoping to capture evidence of Jackson's mistreatment of the prisoners. As he prepared to carry out his plan, John took swift action by sacrificing himself to save Porter, slitting his throat. Another prison officer shot John, and he succumbed to his injuries. Collins then pressed the emergency button, summoning other guards to the scene. Simultaneously, Laura and Gordon arrived with Investigator Hammond. With their assistance, Investigator Hammond exposed Lt. Jackson's corrupt and oppressive actions, leading to Porter's additional sentence being overturned, after spending 15 months in prison. Finally, he is released and reunited with his family. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.